One of the first battles we fought was for the right of every Guyanese to vote. Universal adult suffrage was and is for us a fundamental question. Without that, there can be no democracy. And without democracy, there can be no progress. Uh, my father was born on March 22nd, 1918. In the sugar estate called Port Morant. And uh, my parents uh, came from India in 1905 in a ship called the Elbe. And they were very young. My, pa my father was two years, my mother was one and a half years. My, my dad, after the overseers, the white people, was my dad as a, a, a driver, they call him a driver. And he was the driver in the estate. And he had to give out work because the, the English people didn't even know razor grass from King, <laughs> right? <laughs> so his knowledge, they were relying on him so much. He was always had a mule, you know, to ride on a mule and go in and come into work. And we, we as children grew up with um, the, the cane juice and has a fish, eggs and things like that from the, from the rice fields and so forth, right, yes. My mom always says that she knew after my, my I think my first brother died about eight months. Yeah. And then Chedi, Chedi is uh, the second in the family of her 12 children. But we always consider 11 because we never knew him or anything. But she knew, she says, later on she always says, she knew he was going to be different than any, any child, any child. He had that kind of uh, personality, that kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, charm, or let, let's say. His mother was smart enough to allow him part of the proceeds that they would receive from selling these vegetables or fruits or whatever it is that he did. And he al always mentioned that the elements of finance he learned from his mother and my father from his father my grandfather he learned the elements of leadership because my grandfather was a very bold and flamboyant man they said he had the biggest mustache in the area life in port Morant at that time families lived in basically low g's at that time and poverty was very intense in port Morant and along all the areas where the indentured servants lived I've been talking a lot about poverty and hardships, but perhaps there's another side which must be noted, and that is the pleasures of country life and growing up at Port Morant, apart from playing cricket. Um, I'd like to read you just a, a part of my book, um, which is a chapter called Growing Up, and I believe that is the best part of the whole book. And here is the, the book, The Western Trial, um, The Fight for Guyana's Freedom. And the part which I'm talking about says the following. Looking at my own and other city children, I've always felt that they missed so much. Poverty had been intense at Port Morant, but simple pleasures were many. Country life was full of rich experiences. Perching on the fork of a tree at the center of the Karyan, that's its threshing ground. Prodding the oxen to urge them on the seemingly endless tramp, mashing, that is the threshing of paddy. Sleeping on paddy haystocks under starry skies, even with clouds of mosquitoes buzzing around. Watching cows grazing in the reaped paddy fields. Catching fish with hook and cast nets thrusting one's hand into holes along the banks of empty trenches to find sometimes not fish, but non-poisonous water snakes, shooting birds with slingshots, walking barefoot and pitching marbles in muddy pub puddles, burning the holy heap and playing mud and a beer at Pagua time and attending the August races. August races was something was something with a national institution which all of us used to prepare for. And one of the things about it which was remarkable since we never wore shoes and so on, all of us had to wear shoes that day. 
And when we were coming back from the races, the shoes were hung around our necks because they were hurting so much we were not accustomed to wearing shoes. So those were the pleasures of country life, which I just thought might be interesting for city children to know about.